We are now starting chapter three, which is the properties of matter and the changes that matter undergoes. The substance is matter with a uniform and constant composition. And we have three states of matter that we commonly discuss. One is the solid phase, which has a definite shape and volume. The particles are tightly packed and it will not take the shape of the container in which it's placed. Solids are incompressible, but they can expand a little bit when heated. So examples of a solid are concrete, wax, and gold. We do particle diagrams in the class and we tend to represent the solid phase as tightly packed circles. The symbol for water is H2O and if we have an S in parentheses after it, the S stands for the solid phase. Another state of matter is the liquid phase. Liquids flow and take the shape of the container they're in, but they have a definite volume. So definite volume, no definite shape. The particles of a liquid flow by each other. They are incompressible. You cannot compress a liquid. And they expand slightly when heated. So water is a liquid. Blood is a liquid. Mercury is a liquid. Now, just because you can be a liquid, that doesn't mean you're a substance. So in the liquid phase, we still use circles, but there's no uniform pattern to the distribution of the circles, and they can flow by each other. They're not held in place. So H2O, the symbol for water, if we have an L, a cursive L in parentheses, we're talking about the liquid phase of water. Gases take the shape of the container they're found in. There is no definite shape and they have no definite volume. Uh, gases, because the particles are far apart from each other, uh, can be compressed. Air is a gas. Helium is a gas. Carbon dioxide is a gas. The gas phase we show is circles far apart from each other, and they are in constant motion. So if we see H2O with a G, we are talking about water in the gas phase. Water in the gas phase has a special name. It's called a vapor. It refers to the gaseous state of a substance that's normally a solid or liquid at room temperature. So water in the gas phase is called water vapor because it's normally a liquid. Bromine is normally a liquid. So if it's heated up to form a vapor, we call it bromine vapor. Next page, the physical properties of matter is the, are characteristics of matter that can be observed or measured without changing the composition. We have extensive physical properties, which depends on the amount of substance present. Mass is an extensive property. You can have 20 grams, 50 grams, a billion grams of something. Length is an extensive property. Volume, you cannot define what you have by the volume or the length or the mass of the object. An intensive property is independent of the amount of substance present. Density is an intensive property. The density of aluminum is 2.7 grams per centimeter cubed. If you have a chunk of metal 
and you take the mass and you divide it by its volume and if you get 2.7 grams per centimeter cubed it must be aluminum. Boiling point is an intensive property. The boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. If you have a liquid and it boils at 100 degrees Celsius, it must be water. Chemical properties is considered to be the ability or inability of a substance to combine or change into another substance. Iron reacts with oxygen in the air to form rust. Rust is iron oxide. That is a chemical property of iron that it rusts. Iron does not react when placed in nitrogen gas. So that is a chemical property in that it doesn't react. So when we talk about the state of matter, we have to figure out what conditions of temperature and pressure are we going to use. We use what is called standard temperature and pressure, or for short, STP. Zero degrees Celsius in one atmosphere, or zero degrees Celsius is equal to 273 Kelvin. Another condition of pressure is 101.3 kilopascals. That will be it for today's lesson. And have a great weekend, and we will see you on Monday.